September 28th, 2004. Liverpool had followed up a win against the previous season's Champions League finalist Monaco with a 1-0 loss away at Olympiacos. December 7th, 2004. Liverpool found themselves third in the Champions League group after dropping points at home to Deportivo and away at Monaco. They effectively needed to overturn the 1-0 defeat they had suffered at Olympiacos back in September. They found themselves 1-0 down again at half-time, thanks to Rivaldo. A win was needed by two clear goals to be certain of qualification. A one-goal win could do, but Deportivo would have to come back from three goals down in 45 minutes at home to Monaco. However, they had yet to score a single goal in five and a half matches of Champions League football that season. The players came out for the second half. The cop was ready to suck the ball into the net. Three goals were the difference between only the second appearance in knockout phase of the Champions League since 1985 and the disaster of qualification for the UEFA Cup. And as he often did, Florent Sinema Pongol popped up with an important goal for Liverpool. And as he also often did, Neil Mellor popped up with an all-important goal for Liverpool. But there was just nine minutes left to find a third goal. And who else but Steven Gerrard? And who else on the gantry to make the call but Andy Gray? Oh, you beauty! What a headshot! What a head! He shouted down the microphone into the homes of millions in Britain. And with four minutes left to spare, Liverpool had qualified for the knockout phase. And six months later, Liverpool were European champions for a fifth time in Istanbul. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly, and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Steven Gerrard didn't score against Olympiacos. Liverpool only won 2-1 and for their troubles were plunged into the last 32 of the UEFA Cup. Rafael Benitez wanted to win the UEFA Cup. He'd won it the previous year with Valencia, he liked it, he wanted it. And unfortunately so did Newcastle United, and they eliminated Liverpool in an all-English affair in the last 16. Buoyed by this, Newcastle would reach the semi-finals coming unstuck against the eventual winners AZ Alkmaar. By this point, Liverpool were in a rut. Jimmy Traore had rouletted Liverpool out of the FA Cup at Turf Moor and they were on the edge of losing the Champions League football for the following season. They picked themselves up for the League Cup final against Chelsea in February in a match what Steven Gerrard was left out of. John Arnaris's first minute goal was enough to keep Jose Mourinho from winning his first piece of silverware at Chelsea. But by mid-April, Liverpool were winless in four games in the league. Chelsea had gone on to better things, they had won the league and had a Champions League final against AC Milan to worry about. Another mistake would see Liverpool drop out of the top four race altogether. A draw at home to Middlesbrough and a loss at Highbury put the nail in Liverpool's coffin. A draw at home to Aston Villa to conclude the season saw Liverpool drop into sixth place behind Bolton as rivals Everton qualified for the Champions League. Steven Gerrard handed in a transfer request much to the delight of Jose Mourinho and Chelsea who had just been eviscerated 3-0 in Istanbul by AC Milan. They needed a player to take them that one step further. Unfortunately for them, Gerard decided that he couldn't play for another English club and signed for Real Madrid, joining fellow countrymen Jonathan Woodgate and David Beckham. Alongside new recruits Sergio Ramos and Rubinho, Gerard was bedded into the Real team immediately. He made up a midfield four consisting of Zidane, Beckham, Rubinho and himself. With the number eight on his back, he instantly turned losses into wins against Celta Vigo and Espanyol. With Ronaldo and a resurgent Raul up top, Real Madrid topped their Champions League group beating Leon with ease to first place. By the time PSV came to town in the knockout stage, Gerrard and Real were gearing themselves up for a title challenge. Four successive draws threatened to buckle that challenge, but two goals from Stevie G in the new Camp saw momentum swing the way of Los Blancos. PSV were vanquished, but a yellow card saw Gerrard suspended for the first leg of the quarter-final at home to reigning champions AC Milan. Domestically, however, Gerrard was ever-present in Real's final seven matches, each of them a win. Gerard even finished third in the Pachichi standings with 19 goals, only behind Samuel Eto and David Villa. On the penultimate day, Real wrapped up La Liga with a 4-3 win at home to Villarreal. In Europe, Gerard was eased back into the fold from the bench, away at San Siro against Milan. Pippo Inzaghi had put Milan 1-0 up by the time Gerard emerged from the bench. With 20 minutes left on the clock, he entered the fray, and with stoppage time winding down to a close, Milan were penned back in their own half. And on 94 minutes, it happened. The ball spilled out of the box from a corner to Gerard. A touch to set himself, and bang, Real levelled the tie up. They progressed to the semi-finals on away goals. With Barcelona flagging in the lead, Real put pay to their European hopes too, with 3-1 aggregate winning the final four. This left Arsenal in Paris. Gerard netted from two corners, not so much was volleys but front post headers. In Zinedine Zidane's final club match, Gerard had emulated Zinedine Zidane's display in the 1998 World Cup final, as Real humiliated Arsenal 3-0. Gerard moved on from Real in 2015 to LA Galaxy, but along the way picked up four league titles with Los Blancos and a further three Champions League titles with wins over Inter Milan in 2010, Chelsea in 2012 and Atletico Madrid in 2014. 
Contrastingly, Liverpool only made it back into the Champions League in 2014, after almost a decade in the wilderness. They had to suffer through second stints from Kenny Dalglish and Graham Souness. The closest Liverpool came to a trophy was in the 2012 League Cup final, Dalglish led Liverpool to pasture in a 1-0 defeat to Cardiff City. They had also suffered cup final heartbreak in the 2006 FA Cup final at the hands of West Ham, Jamie Carragher's own goal providing to be the winner there. Now let's take it to the winners and losers. Steven Gerrard, an obvious winner. Because despite missing out on his first Champions League title with Liverpool, he would more than rectify that in Spain with Real Madrid, and he won a league title. Actually, he won quite a few. Real Madrid, also winners, because thanks to Gerrard, Real were able to finally capture La Decima, and a lot sooner than they otherwise would have. And the only losers in this scenario, Liverpool, because it took a long time for them to replace Steve G and a long time to return to the Champions League. They finally made it back to Europe's top table in 2014 with Brendan Rodgers. Is this the alternative universe you expected? Please let us know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for a future scenario. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash a like on the video and subscribe to What If Football for more alternate football universes.